Hey guys, Rich here, and today we are going to Lakewood Lodge in Northwood, Wisconsin. The original lodge was created almost 100 years ago in the 1930s, I think, and run as a lodge for quite a while. It burned down a long time ago, too, though, and now is owned by Bob and Judy Gillette, who I haven't met, but I'm looking forward to because I've heard really good things about them. Every year, the RAF sponsors a work party to come in and help clean the place up and keep it open for general aviation. So that's what we're doing this weekend. And it's got quite the agenda, too. We're going to put in a pier on the little lake there, pick up branches, mow the runway, cut and split firewood, uh, fill potholes on the road. There's a couple dead trees that need to be taken down. There's some picnic tables that need some work. There's an old teepee that we're going to set up so it can be used as a pilot shelter. There's just a lot of stuff to do. I was messaging with a couple of my friends. They're already there. Apparently, they're getting warmed up for the weekend. So by the time I get there, I think the party's going to be fully underway. Runway there is kind of northwest to southeast. Grass, of course. Looks like it's kind of carved out of the uh, woods there. The area has a lot of glacial lakes. All of Wisconsin, from the north down to the Driftless Zone, has been made and remade over the years by glaciers during the Ice Ages. And this terrain is no exception to that. So there are some glacial mounds, there are some glacial lakes. The woods around here are pretty dense. I guess there's a town nearby that has a cranberry festival every year. You have to have a lot of water for cranberries, so I guess that speaks to what's going on in the area today. Anyway, we're getting close. So let's get landed and see what's going on. Okay, we got one more lake to go over and a few smaller ones. We should be at Lakewood Lodge. Almost no wind being reported in the area now. What little there is seems to favor landing on runway 33. I see a gap in the trees right off my nose here. I think that must be it. Because I've got this big lake over here as well. So I think that's the play. I think we're kind of straight in right now. Do a circle, see if there's a wind sock. But all of a sudden there are just hundreds of these little tiny lakes. Little glacial lakes left behind when the ice retreated. Okay, yeah, so that little spot there is a runway. Not gonna say I can see the side markings quite yet, but the pattern mowed into it is a little bit more obvious and that's what it has to be. Quick watch traffic, A1 Whiskey Tango, three miles to the south. Inbound landing, uh, probably 3-3, three, three, liquid watch. Yep, I see planes now. Last count I heard was that there were supposed to be 30 people here. Five planes so far. Windsock is totally blanked out. Yep, there's another one at the far end. Yep, that one's blasted as well. Go ahead and land three. three. Looks like I had quite a crowd watching me land. This morning I was supposed to be recording a quick video for this product Plane Perfect has called One. The idea of the video was to show the product on the plane then clean the plane with it and show the difference between the before and after shots in terms of how clean it was. Unfortunately, the product works so well that I couldn't actually do the after shot because the product wouldn't stay on the airplane. So after being frustrated for a few minutes, I realized that this itself was actually a pretty compelling testimony about the quality of the product. The name One comes from the fact that it's designed to be used on any surface. So you can use it on your leading edges, on your windshield, on your cowl, on your fuselage, whatever you want to. One product, all surfaces. So give it a try. I think you'll like it. The Gillettes are always great hosts, and this weekend was no exception to that rule. They started us off with a tasty breakfast, some music, and then everyone got to work. First on the agenda was putting Bob's homemade dock back in the water. In classic teamwork makes the dream work style, along with some help from force multipliers in the form of steel pipes we were able to slowly work the pieces downhill. In the end, this required the work of four pipes and six people to pull it off, with two pipes pushing from the back and two more lifting the dock to reduce friction with the ground. After a bit of work, they were back into the water from their winter resting places. We had a little boat with an engine to tow the pieces around the back of the pond to get them where they needed to be installed. Unfortunately, we also had about the worst gas you've ever seen. It's kind of amazing that the engine would run at all, but once we figured out we had a problem and restocked with some fuel that didn't look like a mix of peanut butter and lamp oil, 
the engine ran like new and we got the pieces where they needed to be. Finally, we got everything installed where it belongs for the summer by attaching the pieces to the pipes that hold them in place. As the day passed, a few other people dropped in to help and we consulted the chore list to figure out how to deploy the new helpers. In the campground there was a pine tree that needed pruning, so we organized a small group to trim off the limbs and process the wood. Down the road, an old oak had fallen and needed to be processed. There is an essentially never-ending supply of firewood here, just waiting to be cut up and split by industrious volunteers. Once split, it's stacked and added to the inventory for the next campfire. With those things crossed off the list, it was time to give some attention to the Gillette's house, where some helpers are refreshing the paint on their log cabin. Doing this frequently prevents bigger problems down the road. Then it was time for lunch in the hangar. The meal is somewhat potluck with several people making dishes and setting them out for a classic Midwestern meal. After lunch, we got back to work, including someone crawling up on the hangar to do some maintenance on the roof. Guys, even from here over the sounds of the chainsaws, I heard some noise coming from the woods. So I walked over to investigate and found someone who brought a skid stir to work on the road and fix potholes. Finally, the evening drew to an early close for the majority with only a modest campfire remaining as a gathering point where one could chill in the tranquil ambiance and be serenaded by the soothing symphony of nature's stillness. But of course we had one more meal to eat before leaving. This time in the form of Mexican eggs with biscuits. They were a super delicious way to close out the weekend. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for sticking around till the end. This channel has over a hundred other videos. So if you like this one, click on another and teach YouTube that you like content like this. 